In this video, you're gonna walk away having some actionable steps you can take to become a chiller technician and understand how to get involved in this side of the industry. It's a very closed side of the market that can be just, it can be really hard to get your foot in the door to get started, especially with our current um, training conditions. You know, we've, we've made a lot of improvements as an industry, but we're still very closed off, closed lip about a lot of the just essential facts that we should be more openly sharing, in my opinion. How you doing? I hope you're having a great day. I am Holden Schamberger with HVAC Time and Chiller Academy. I specialize in chiller systems. I came up in the non-union side of this trade. So I, I don't have a union background, but I've gotten to know a lot of people who are from the union side. I've gotten to a fairly decent understanding of that process. And I'm going to discuss both options, both paths you could take. Now the union or all of this will be a little different based off of your area and whether or not you're in a, u a heavy union area or not will heavily influence how you may want to go about this. So uh, t to me, it, I don't have a personal preference either way. There are some areas that have fantastic unions and they have a really good uh, training core and you'll be well taken care of. And while I'm non-union, I'm also in Texas, so we're a very non-union state. There's unions here, but they're not prevalent, they're not the dominant force. It is the non-union sector that tends to be larger. So with that, I I just I came up non-union, but I've competed heavily with the unions from a professional level. Let's start off with the non-union approach uh, and it, how you can work your way through, and then we'll get into on the on the end uh, the union side of it and what are the steps you can take there. So for the non-union side, I came up in residential, so that was where I got my start, and. I worked my way into refrigeration and low temp, and I had a specialty in ice machines for a time. And then I had an opportunity to get into heavy commercial. Now, those first couple of years is where I did that. I spent a full year doing just residential, spent a year doing light commercial, refrigeration, restaurant type work, and then got into the heavy commercial side and went straight into having to learn centrifugals and towers and plants and automations and all the stuff. What I'm going to suggest to you is find a find a company, find a service company who does chiller service in your area. They, they may be difficult to get into, especially if, if you've already got experience. Let's say you've been doing residential or light commercial for a time. I'm sorry, but your experience is great and it can be used, but what you can actually work on is quite limited. That's just the hard truth. When you try to translate that into the chiller market, you're not that well versed in what you're about to get into. This is a, it's a very more, it's a much more advanced side of this industry that requires much higher levels of training. And part of the things that a company has to look at is, you know, in residential side, the, you make a mistake, it's typically at worst a few thousand dollars, like at worst. Typically, where in the chiller side, one mistake could be $10,000, dollars 50000 dollars. I mean, I've I've made those mistakes. I've made twenty thousand dollar mistakes where we had to eat it as a company because of just what the conditions were. You know, got sent the wrong parts on a compressor. Didn't realize it till it was too late, and it was partially my bad for not verifying I had the right parts to begin with. It was a learning lesson for me, but uh, you know that that's a lot of money. So if we put people out there who are not properly equipped, then that's the risk that is being taken is how many of those mistakes are going to get made. Anyway, so just some perspective as to why it may be odd to get some of those opportunities. How you can do this, you just need to find somebody who will take you on and put you into an apprentice role. Even if it is a company, so say they work on chillers, they have a chiller side, they start you off over here in the preventative maintenance side, or they give you this other role and they promise you to get it to work into chillers, you may have to, to fight your way through and get in front of these chillers and just do what you have to do 
talk with the service manager, talk with the senior guys or the chiller technicians on the staff, volunteer for as much as you can. Just be that guy who is as involved as possible in the chiller side. And just in some cases, without getting yourself in trouble, be relentless. Don't back off. Don't let them push you to the side. I want this. I want to be a chiller technician. Fight, 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 fight. You have to push. And if you don't have that kind of drive, it's going to, you're going to have a hard time in the chiller market anyway because this is not an easy market to compete in and to stay on top of things. This is very advanced. We get into at least very advanced systems and there's extremely high expectations for what we do. It's also why the wages are what they are as well. So just bear that in mind. You've, you've got to prove that you even have the character to compete at that level to begin with. Now, as you push and fight through there, even if that company doesn't give you the opportunities you're seeking directly, what you can do is you can take that time, take that experience, and then go find a different shop who will look at that experience and allow you to apply it. And so you may leave that company hardly ever getting to touch them, but you learned a lot about them in the process or as much as you physically could, and you've been in front of them. You've got to put hands on them to some extent. So then take that information, can show how you've made progress and you are ready to start taking steps into the chiller side and that you're watching videos like this on how to educate yourself and you're doing a lot of self-improvement directly then that company will give you a chance because we don't have enough chiller technicians. We need them dramatically. So let them bring you in. And then with that other company, then you have an opportunity to work your way up and build your way and develop yourself further and start to earn the careers. And even if that second company, say they let you come in on the air-cooled side, but they never really let you get into the water cold side in the centrifugals that's okay similar mindset get started in what they will let you do get the experience get the hands-on really work your way towards just being that expert level and being competitive in the air cooled space and then as much as you can possibly touch a water cooled or a centrifugal do that and then when you've once you've gotten yourself to a certain point you're a couple of years into all of that at at a minimum and a couple of years is not that much time in this but like as you're getting that that time underneath you then you can go find another company who also does centrifugal work and who you can then try to translate these skills to and say, listen, I've done really well in the air-cooled market. I've gotten some experience in the water-cooled centrifugal market. I'm not a complete idiot. Give me a chance. Let me get in here. Let me prove to you what I can do. Here's my track record. Here's what I've done. Here's the companies I've worked at. This is what I did while I was there. And this is how I've grown myself and improved. And you just constantly continue that process until you... Until you just know your craft, like be proud, own this craft, own your place in this as a chiller technician or a chiller mechanic. So in terms of how to, with, without just having a special and a unique circumstance and opportunity, how you can just brute force your way into the chiller market, honestly, that's how I would do it. And I know a couple of people who have done it or are in the process of doing that now, and I see them having success and it's very encouraging. Now, if you're on the union side, the union side, that comes back to, can you get the union to accept you? So the union has an apprenticeship as well. It's a five-year apprenticeship that they'll put you into, and they have their own internal training. You won't go through regular trade school, even though going through trade school first before getting to the union shop could really improve your chances on getting into the union. So I can suggest that, if, if especially if you're in a very competitive union market, you can get traditional trade school ahead of time, get that under you, get that certification, then go to the union shop and say, hey, I've already done this. I want to get into the the larger applications. And you don't have to go directly to the manufacturers. There's all kinds of union shops that are not manufacturer specific. So just find one and just start talking to them and work your way in. One of the really interesting things, and I don't know all the ins and outs, but one of the interesting things to me about the union side is 
transitioning companies, as long as you stay within the union, like you've got a lot of benefits and you've got a lot of flexibility in that way. And that five-year apprenticeship is a very rigid and structured program, but you'll come out the other side with a pretty robust education, especially if you're in a one of the good union markets. Now, some of the more poor ones, your education may not be as good. And, and I, I, don't, I don't have any suggestions on how to identify that. Um, and the, if the unions want you in, then, you know, they're going to tell you what they have to tell you to get you to join because I mean, their benefit is they get your dues. Like they want members to join and they want to get, especially young members to join to get you locked in early and get you locked into all the union benefits early, get you hooked on it so that you'll pay their dues for the rest of your career. And you know, that'll always be a part of it and they'll always be able to get that money back from you. Not to mention all the money made from you as a, as an employee. So they have a really high incentive to have you on board and they're going to put you through this process. Like they, they do have a much more structured environment, I would say, than we, than we have on the non-union side. And it's one of the things I hope I can improve over time is, just an influence in the industry, but that is your basic approach. You go into the union hall, talking to the uh, the. A lot of times, some of the unions nationally, I think, have an actual HVAC division. A lot of times, HVAC or HVAC. Sorry for anybody that finds that offensive. A lot of times, they'll have a or will be rolled into the pipe fitter section. So you'll be involved in the pipe fitter uh, group, which is also a lot of your plumbers and different people, instead of having a dedicated, like we are the HVAC side of the union and here's your pipe fitters over here and your smaller ones, especially from what I understand, uh, you'll be a part of the pipe fitter section. And for anybody that has any thoughts, experience, you want to share whatever, like, please, this is a great time. Get in the comments. Let's start heavy conversations around this. This is only going to benefit the younger crowd and helping those who are trying to find their way in, in this industry and in this life make a better choice and make your pitch on union versus not. You know, it's there's neither is a perfect option. There are downsides to both, and it really is regional dependent. So if you're in a region with a great union or maybe you're not, throw all that down there so that maybe we can start to build some information that people can make a good decision from. If you really enjoyed this and you've got some great benefit from this, go check out chilleracademy.com. It is a great place where you can build yourself from a foundation. You can start to learn these principles, all the information is in a concise, consolidated place that is an interactive online course that goes at your pace. And I can teach you all of these fundamentals of chillers, how to get there from the ground up. And that way, when you walk into some of these interviews or you're working on these machines, you know what you already understand what the terms are, what you're looking at, and what you're dealing with. Chiller Academy can help you get there. MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. They really need you. I'll see you all around.